Have you ever wondered how to create rendered exploded axonometric diagrams that instantly elevate any presentation? In this video, I'll show you the full process using SketchUp, D5 Render, and the newest AI tool that generates 3D models from text or images. We'll cover everything, model setup, materials, landscaping, post-production, so stick around till the end as this might change how you 3D model. So first, I opened my model in SketchUp. I started by grouping all of the individual parts I wanted to explode. For me, it's screens, roof lights, and a garden wall. Next, I switched the camera to parallel projection, and then I changed the angle to an isometric view. Basically, one of those standard ISO views. When I like the view, I saved it as a scene. Then I open D5 Render using Live Sync. Now D5 doesn't have a true AXO view, but you can get a similar look by setting the field of view to around 10 degrees and switching to two-point perspective. It gives you that clean, almost isometric look. Don't forget to save the scene in D5 once you've set it up. So lighting-wise, the default sun looked a bit too strong and it cast shadows from the raised elements which kind of ruined the axo look so instead i used a pure white hdri background and i lowered the sun settings this gives a much softer more neutral light it looks a little bit flat now but we do fix it later and then i started adding materials using the d5 material library but i did have a weird issue when i added gravel so it looked super blurry in the axo scene and at first I thought it was just a texture problem, but when I went back to regular perspective view, it looked fine. What? So if that happens to you, just refresh the perspective, resave your scene, and that should fix it. Kept adding materials using D5's library and some saved ones from other projects, tweaking the scale, color, and properties to fit the scene. From there, I added glass, wood, marble, tiles, water, and grass. Although, from that far away, the grass texture barely shows. So if you just want to leave it as a texture image, that works too. Okay? The design just wasn't what I imagined. I wanted to create something inspired by Islamic architecture, and it just wasn't given that. So I redesigned it off camera, I added more detail, I brought back the garden wall which made the space feel more enclosed and purposeful, and now it looked so much better, like something with real meaning and character. Next, it was time to add furniture and little design elements, and for that I used this tool called Rodin AI. The website is called hyper3d.ai and you'll need to register to start using it. It's not completely free, it's a paid service, but you can either buy individual credits or get a subscription which gives you a discount. Once you're in, you'll see a lot of featured assets that other people have made. It's a nice way to get inspired before you start. Now to make a model, you've got a few options. You can upload an image of what you want, or you can use text prompts with something called TurboGen. Or you can use 3D control net, which is great if you want to define exact dimensions, which is perfect for furniture or architectural details. After uploading, choose the generation mode, focal for really detailed geometry, zero if you want a super clean base, speedy for fast rough ideas, or just leave it on default if you're unsure. Once that's done, you will get extra prompts at the top, like symmetric, smooth, simple, or edges. You can actually redo the geometry up to 50 times, and it only costs you half a credit when you actually confirm one. There's a history tab too, so if one of your earlier versions was better, you can always go back. But once you're happy with the shape, you can pick between triangulated or quad mesh and set the detail level. The higher the number, the smoother and more refined the model will look. You can also jump into mesh editor if you want to tweak the geometry a bit more. 
Now after you confirm the geometry, you will unlock material generation. You can either keep the same texture it picked up from the image or you can upload a different texture. You also get 15 tries to get that right too, which is more than enough. Then I downloaded the model, exported it as FBX with PBR materials, I imported the model, batch imported the texture, and then adjusted them in T5. And that's how I made a few details of this project like this ornate Islamic table, some lanterns, traditional teacups. But since this model only has one material, I would usually replace it with a D5 native material because they're superior and they look way more realistic. Now, another cool thing that I liked about this website is that you can upload multiple views of the same object or even combine images to make a hybrid design. Now, to be fair, I don't think Rodin is quite ready yet for high-end visualization or close-ups. And if you are doing some serious 3D modeling, I would recommend using a different software because the materials right now I feel are limited, but hopefully with more updates this can improve. So definitely check out this software and keep an eye on future updates. After that, it was time to add vegetation. I wanted to highlight the garden space. It's very important in Islamic homes. This part is kind of personal for me, so my granddad in Syria had such a beautiful garden and we used to sit there at night talking, drinking tea, looking at the stars and he passed away a few years ago but I really wanted to include that memory into the design because when I think of a beautiful garden, that's the first garden I think about. So to add plants to the garden, I used the path tool because it keeps the file small and organized and then you can place trees and bushes by hand to make it feel more natural. Doing it this way as well speeds up the process because you can duplicate paths and reuse them elsewhere, which saves so much time. I've organized the model into layers, so vegetation, clutter, people, furniture just to keep the file organized and this is how the diagram looks with all of the layers turned on. Now it's time for the final touches and since we're aiming for a flat illustration style diagram, the focus here is on clean visuals rather than realism. So the grass was too saturated, the wood looked a little dull and overall there was just too much contrast in the lighting. So I switched to clay view to get a better sense of the shadows. I adjusted the sun angle to somewhere between 75 and 90 degrees but because the elements were exploded they started casting strong shadows that just didn't look great so to fix that i went back into sketchup hit the roof resynced the model with d5 render and then i fine-tuned the lighting softened the shadows i turned the sun strength down and I brought the exposure up slightly once I returned to normal view because the image felt a little dark. I zoomed out a little, saved the new scene and this time exported the render at 16k resolution including the sky mask and material ID channels. So I've tried the 8k before but when you zoom in it looked a little bit blurry so I repeated the same process for the roof layer and then I brought both renders into Photoshop. From there I used the wand tool which is shortcut W, right click and select color range. I clicked on the white background and I increased the fuzziness to clean up the selection. And then I added a layer mask to each render to hide the background. To remove the building from the roof layer, I used the polygonal lasso tool to select around it and then I painted it black into the mask. After that, I added a solid color fill layer for the background and I chose a tone that worked with the overall palette, something like a warm gray. If you want to move anything around in the drawing, make sure to select all of the layers when you do so that they're all aligned properly. I wanted the gold to feel a bit more saturated and bright, so I used a hue and saturation adjustment layer. The roof still felt a little too grey, so I added a lighter grey fill to help blend it in better. 
So then came the dash lines, which were frustrating. Please tell me why they are so annoying in Photoshop. Illustrator is so much better for this, but obviously I don't want to use too many software. Bombastic side eye. Honestly, in the end, I just rasterized everything, merged them, and did a quick cleanup because I couldn't be bothered. I also lowered their opacity to 50% so that they'd sit nicely in the background. Once I was happy with everything, I used Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E to flatten the whole design into a new layer. Convert it into a smart object, open camera raw filter, add a subtle grain effect and a soft vignette to tie everything together. Off camera, I added some text labels just to balance the composition and fill in some of the empty space. And that completed the final render. Now, if you want this specific SketchUp and D5 render model, it'll be on my Patreon. Lastly, if you've never used Rodin before, definitely check it out. It shows great promise, super fun to use, and suitable for architects, students, or anyone doing 3D modeling. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm Rasha Shururu, and I'll see you next time.